My name is Mike Freed. I grew up on wild lakes in Minnesota. The Boundary Waters Canoe Wilderness Area was a place that became the center of the earth for me. It was a place I gravitated back to where I could get in touch with wild nature. I taught forestry in five or six universities around the country as the head of a park management curriculum. You're really busy, so you tend to get too immersed in your work. I started hiking. It became a pattern. Nine months working at the university, and then three months to four months living in a tent. And that pattern kind of took me away from the things I loved so much. The Boundary Waters and Minnesota Lakes, Lakes of the North. Now I've come back full circle to some land I bought years and years ago that was right near the Boundary Waters and had these six wild lakes. They're natural lakes. This area is very important to the psyche and the emotional needs of a lot of people in Minnesota. That's why I bought these pieces of property on these wild lakes, because I wanted to be able to touch bases with that. What happens if you just sell this land? It's going to be fragmented. Somebody's going to build a cabin and punch a road in. Someone's going to subdivide it into a little 10 acre and five acre and one acre pieces. It was an alternative that I had and um, I could have made money that way. That's land fragmentation. That destroys the complexity of the habitat. That's what I wanted to avoid. I've been privileged to take care of this land, and I want to pass it on to someone who can continue to care for it. That's up to the Nature Conservancy. That's where I turn to find a home for these properties. Mike's property is scattered across 12 parcels in a large, probably 30,000 acre landscape of Superior National Forest. It's the only private land within that landscape. If it got split up into many parcels, and we started punching holes into this intact forest, we create barriers for movement. And through climate change, species need to be able to move. These large blocks of forest give species that kind of opportunity. The other thing is that the forest that's here continues to suck carbon out of the atmosphere. So both the storage and the continued sequestration are really important for mitigating climate change. When I was hiking the Appalachian Trail, I came to the end of the trail after 2,200 miles of walking. My last hike up Mount Katahdin, we head up the mountain and just at daybreak, you come to a plaque at the bottom of the mountain and it says, man is born to die. Our works are short-lived. Buildings crumble, monuments decay, and wealth vanishes. But Katahdin, in all its glory, will remain the mountain of the people of Maine. Percival Baxter, the governor of Maine. He was having a hard time getting the legislature to purchase Mount Katahdin before the forestry companies got there. They were logging up to the base. And so he bought 6,000 acres and gave it to the people of Maine. These places are rapidly disappearing. I believe that we have to do what Percival Baxter did. My gift to the people of Minnesota is 2,000 acres of wild land that will remain in some kind of conservation ownership. 
this is the gift that the people of Minnesota deserve. <laughs>